How do engineers make a structural design? How can we know a construction is safe? The answer is, engineers create design levels to, cal to calculate. And then they compare the load side to the resistance side. And that's why I make this video about design levels, because that's the basis of all structural design. Hello, my name is Marcus and I am the Swiss structural engineer. On this channel I talk about structural engineering and design topics. When you are interested in structural calculations, then it could be a great moment now to subscribe my channel. In this video I explain the concept of the design levels as basis for structural design and I make a simple example in which I calculate bending moment and bending resistance of a simple beam to show the principle of the design levels. Engineers make calculations for building structures. There are formulas for all kinds of results, bending moments, shear forces, tension and compressive strength and much more. But what do engineers do with these calculations and results? How do these figures lead to a safe construction? That's the question. The answer is comparison. We compare numbers, we compare results. So we take resulting numbers caused by existing loads and we compare them to numbers given by the existing construction or the construction we have planned in our design. By comparison, we can decide whether a construction is safe or not. But before we talk about this, the design levels, which is the main topic of this video, there is something basic we have to understand and this is also about the two sides of the comparison. On the first side there is the statics. In statics we make calculations based on existing respectively supposed loads using clear static models. Very common static elements are for example the simple beam or the four side supported slab. You can divide all building structures into a couple of static model elements. This could be bar elements or slab elements. Um, from there you can calculate different things like bending moments or deformations using simple formulas. The same thing goes for slabs where you can use the journey tables. You can check out my video number one on that topic. For more complicated systems you will probably have to use a computer software. So to recap this part, in, in statics we make a calculation based on existing loads and on an existing static system. Of course, cross-section, area and material have an impact on the self-weight, which on its part affects, affects the loads. But in the first place, statics is in, independent of cross-section and material. So the statics gives you results based on the loads and the static system of the construction. On the other side, and that's the counterpart, we have what we call the strength of material. Here we are talking about either a real existing construction or a planned construction. So there are specific cross-sections of, of beams and slabs and there are specific materials with determined properties. And the results of the strength of material side re represent the resistance of the structure. So now we have a load side and we have a resistance side, which we can compare. And as long as the resistance is bigger than the load, the structure is safe. So this is basically the principle of a structural design. But as we have to build in some security into the calculation, we have to go a step further. And there is where the concept of the design levels comes into play. I put you here all the levels in a diagram and we will talk about all four levels in detail. The bottom line is for the loads or the results of the calculations without any factors. It's the lowest level representing the effective or service load. So this is what we effectively 
have what takes place in nature. To provide some security, we now add some factors to the calculation. And as we multiply the loads with these factors, we call them load factors. The load factors depend on the kind of load. You can take the factors from the local codes, as for example from the Swiss codes. The results of these calculations now are on a higher level, which is a virtual level, because it's not real, we only act on this level for calculations. We call it design level. The top level also is kind of real, because this is the level of failure. Here is where materials break. You can stretch a steel bar until it breaks and then you can measure the strength at the point of failure. And this is real. We call that level yield or ultimate level. And this of course is something that never should take place in the use of a construction. And that's why we lowered the ultimate level down to the design level of resistance with another security factor called resistance factor. The resistance factors mainly depend on the building material and can also be taken from the codes, like for example from the Swiss codes for steel constructions. In some codes there is given a value of resistance on design level directly as for example in the codes for timber and concrete steel. In these cases you directly act on the design level of resistance and you won't have to worry about the resistance factors because it's already built in. So that's the overview of the four levels we have, ending up with two design levels one load-sided and one resistance-sided. And now we can compare. And as long as the load side, as long as all load-side design values are lower than the resistance side design values, the structure is safe. Now we want to get into an example making clear the concept. I will show the calculation of the bending moment of a steel girder using three load cases and also using all the factors to make clear the design levels. Let's suppose we have a pedestrian bridge with a span of 6 meters and a width of 2 meters. There will be a girder on each side that makes a load width of 1 meter each. It makes the calculation easier for the, for the, for the example. So we choose a girder HEB200 which is a DIN dimension with a steel quality of S235. The self-weight of this girder is 61 kg per meter. Then there is a bridge surface construction, let's suppose a 10 cm concrete element, which is the dead load. And there is a life load of 6 kN per square meter or per meter. These values are effective. Now we can determine the design load by adding the load factors. For self and dead load we have one of 1.35 and for the life load it's 1.5. Load factors take into consideration the accuracy of the loads. The self weight of a steel girder or a concrete element is quite clear so the load factors are rather low. We don't need that much of security. With life loads the factor is higher, because here the variation is higher. Load factors are given in your local codes. So we end up with a design load of PD of 13.2 kN per meter. With this approach we already act on the design level. And by using the formula for the bending moment of a simple beam, we now automatically get the resulting bending moment on design level, which is 59.4 kN. So this is the design moment from the load side, based on the chosen static system. This is the acting moment on, on design level. Now we go for the resistance. With girder cross-section and material properties, we can calculate the bending resistance. We can select the moment of resistance W 
for our girder HEB200 from any steel table. For this profile it's 570,000 cubic millimeters. This value only corresponds to the cross section and is therefore only a geometric property. Additionally, we have the material property, which here is the yield tension of the steel. The name S235 marks the yield tension Fy, which as you remember is the top or failure level of the four levels. The relation between the three values, tension, bending moment and moment of resistance is this one. Tension is equal to bending moment divided by moment of resistance. From here we now can calculate the resisting bending moment on design level. We divide the yield tension Fy by the resistance factor for steel, which is 1.05, and multiply this by the moment of resistance. The result 128 kN is the resisting bending moment on design level. So now you can see that the resisting design moment is bigger than the design moment from the load side. So concerning bending resistance we now can say the structure is safe. Looking at these numbers we could even try to downsize the girder. But be aware that you always have to check several items of a construction. In this example you would certainly have to check the shear resistance and the de deformations as well. Only then the structural design will, will complete. But these checks also work after the same concept of the design levels. So that's it. I hope I could make clear the concept of the design levels and you are a little smarter now. Once you are familiar with this concept, you can make all static design using the same approach. When you liked this video and you are eager to see more, please push the like button and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching and see you. Cheers.